The four-step method to high-performance trading and the seven-step daily routine for high-performance traders are both free downloads. The four-step method for high-performance trading is about de developing the mindset and the routines to increase your competence and your ability to execute your trading edge in a live trading environment. Constant progress. Seven-step daily routine for high-performance traders is an audio program download designed to help traders bulletproof their day-to-day -day habits, discipline, and develop a winning mindset. Again, the link is in the description box below. They're free downloads. Let's get started. Just reminding traders if they're new to this channel or if this is the first time you've seen this video, if you go to this playlist, everything you need is in this playlist as it is titled. We go over the templates, the timings, the levels, the behavior of price. This will help to bulletproof your understanding of the best trade setups in the playbook. Again, these are free videos on the YouTube channel to support and enhance the skills and the development of your trading prowess within the playbook itself. Everything you need is in this playlist. Good day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today, I'm going to be going over what setups are and differentiating between day counts, cycles, pushes, levels, and all these things that uh, can be helpful in helping traders identify markets that are setting up. But I'm gonna go back and just demonstrate the simple process Monday to Friday the weekly templates and how simple things can be to hunt out one opportunity on an instrument in different sessions, different templates over the week. And my objective is to hunt out parabolic trade setups. Parabolic are, are ones that are going to explode, not directions, not trying to get into a market and hold on. I'm looking for opportunities where I can scale in that are driven by other time frame traders. And as I've mentioned, hunting out two to three in the week out of a basket of instruments, regardless of the session that you're trading, and how to hunt those opportunities out during the week. Now, coming back to the basic template, Monday, day one is the opening range. The opening range, there are certain opportunities that can present on a Monday based on how the template sets up for a three session opportunity. There are certain opportunities that can present on day two. Day two typically will expand the range in the new week. That range expansion coming from the beginning of closing price, Friday's closing price is where that market will open up. We can have gaps on a Monday. That is the most common day to have a gap. But closing price is the reference point where price will begin to auction. Day one, day two, expanding the range. And day three, Wednesday is the midpoint range of the week. So we have Monday, day one, Tuesday, day two, Wednesday, day three. Now, when we head into the closing range of the week on the back side, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is the front side of the week. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is the back side of the week. That doesn't mean that it's a dump. It doesn't mean that it's a pump. It means that we're closer to the end of the week now than we are to the start of the week. Front side, back side. And Wednesday resets as a day one, the midpoint range of the week, heading into our closing range. Thursday's our new day two, and we can have a range expansion on the back side of the week. We can have we can have a market that has already established the high and low of the week. And we can have free cash Friday, day three, the closing range of the week. Now understand, not trying to imprint this onto every instrument, I'm using this as my template to hunt out trade setups. So a setup is pump and dump, dump and pump for parabolic opportunities. Now a trade setup is going to give me a parabolic opportunity, whether this is over the course of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, doesn't matter. This can be a three session setup on day three, but this is the opportunity that allows me to scale in for a parabolic explosion. Now, I typically like to hunt out shorting opportunities, but if I have an opportunity for a dump and pump parabolic long trade, that's the best case candidate in that session on that day, then I'll take the long trade. Emphasizing that the opportunities are for parabolic explosions, whether they are the dump and pump or the pump and dump opportunity. Now, I wanna go over this template again, and we'll talk about levels in a moment. So important to understand uh, if you're going to hunt out setups to understand that 
Monday is the opening range. Tuesday, day two, typically will expand the range. Now, we can have signal days. We'll talk about that, those in a moment. Inside days, first red days, first green days. We can get three days of breakout traders in the markets. By the time we hit Wednesday, we have our midpoint range of the week. That can be a reset for a continuation. It can be a trend trade continuation in the second half of the week. Or we can see reversal opportunities setting up. Or we may have a market that is between the opening range high low of the week and the initial balance day two coiling for an explosive reversal or trend trade heading into the backside of the week now i've gone over levels in previous videos uh, understanding that when we start our week friday's closing price is where everything starts from on the monday and again we can have a gap but that is the reference point now our previous days high and low now if we start a new week and monday is our opening range and we haven't broken a daily level or a weekly level when we get to these levels these levels represent where the market put in highs and lows and other time frame traders have come into the market to either buy down low or sell up high and those become our three levels that every single trader has when a new a new day starts a new week and then the new day, this is our reference point. These are the levels that I'm looking for those parabolic setups to come off of in the session that I'm trading. So traders sometimes will come to a market that's already moving and they're trying to trade it, uh, but they're trading candles up with no real parabolic setup because it's up high or down low. Those are not setups to me. Counting levels, counting pushes, hunting M's and W's, those are all fantastic if you're trying to catch the, the high or catch the low. But a setup is a very specific, a very specific model that allows me to set p position myself into that market for the parabolic explosion. So again, my objective is to be able to identify a scalable, repeatable, sizable opportunity. Catching the high or catching the low or or selling a market to catch a move is not my objective. Not not saying that that if it's working for traders and they're doing that that's great but that's not what i'm doing my objective is very specific setups they're parabolic pump and dump or dump and pump opportunities now my rationale behind hunting out these setups is that they're they're the money making setups and as i repeat you make money on the days that it's easy to make money so if you understand that then the process for me was eliminating out garbage trading 50 50 trading uh, things that are subjective, whereas I can rinse and repeat the same pump and dump, dump and pump opportunities once you understand the process and the templates Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Now, we've talked about other opportunities. We'll, we'll go over that in a moment, but understand 90-10 parabolic setups. So what those are, or when the market sets up, they're, trade, they're specific trade setups, which we'll go over in a moment. They repeat. They're simple. Day one, day two, day three, reset, etc. Day one, day two, day three. They're driven by other time frame traders. Having a basket of instruments that reflect the potential opportunities in that session, whether it's Asia, London, or New York, increases the likelihood of you being able to hunt out a best trade candidate. We've talked about that. Now, one instrument may only give one best parabolic trade setup in your session in the entire week just one and as i've mentioned front side back side there are opportunities every day if you have a large enough basket and you're proficient at scrolling through and identifying a best trade candidate now several people again this is my these are my opinions my thought process setups repeat so i don't care what the instrument is i'm looking for the setup whether it's just for a session trade on a tuesday uh, maybe it moved in London and the markets have all moved in London, but there's a best trade candidate in the U.S. session for a session opportunity. Maybe it's a range expansion on day two for a measured move in the U.S. window. We'll look at some markets in a moment and we'll go through this process with the template on markets this week, the non-farm payrolls week. Now, the problem I have with the other uh, type of thinking, taking trades who are so you know, again, this is my thought process, my opinions, is that traders are trading markets thinking that they're taking trade setups, but they're just trading the markets. They're trading the movement. They're trading the price action. 
They're counting pushes. They're looking for M's and W's. Uh, but how is that scalable? How is that scalable? How does that rinse and repeat? How is that simple? We could have 20 traders in a room and they'll, they'll all count different levels and different pushes and they'll find M's and W's all over the place. How is that consistent at growing a, a, a trading business? Again, scalability. Where do you put size in? Which, which trades do you put size on? Just any random trade? Um, you know, that creates analysis paralysis. That's what, that's what leads to emotional, impulsive, irrational behavior, revenge trading, tilt, all of those things. Taking trades leads to the type of behavior that can cause destruction, self-destruction, self-sabotage, frustration, anger, elation, overconfidence, overleveraging, FOMO, YOLO. And uh, that's the type of behavior that comes full circle again. And the traders will trade. They'll make some good trades. They'll make some profitable trades. Uh, they'll, they'll start the cycle again, whereas setups, very specific setups that repeat. You do the same process every week, the same process. You hunt out the best candidates, front side, back side for parabolic opportunities. Now it's imperative that uh, for me, what I look for are the signal days. We've talked about day three longs or day three shorts, breakout traders in the markets. We have first red day opportunities. Those are my favorite. I like to short. First green day opportunities, same thing, but in reverse in the long direction. And of course, the one of the most powerful signal days you can get on any market is the inside day. Now, when we understand the day count, the templates, the pump and dump larger time frame templates over the course of the week, we can also get three day setups. Now, this is where traders really get confused and make things complicated. And it's actually very, very simple. Now we have a really simple model or I have a really simple model. It's been diluted and confused and people have talked about three day cycles and all these things, but those aren't setups. Those aren't setups. Uh, it's not, you know, all these other things that people have said it is. This is me taking my information and breaking it into specific opportunities that I can hunt for. This is, this is what Stacy Burke has done. So again, on any given day, there are potential trade setups, but understanding that Monday's the opening range, Tuesday, typically day two will expand the range. Then we have our signal days. Then we can have three day setups. So people have made things so complicated, but it's really simple. There's three days. If it's a Monday, I'm looking back at, at three days, Thursday, Friday, Monday on an, to find the best instrument that actually has a setup. If it's a Tuesday, I will look at Friday, Monday, Tuesday, and typically, again, we're looking at weekly levels to establish, is it a reversal opportunity? Are we inside of the previous week's range? Is there an instrument that actually has a setup or is it Thursday? And then of course we have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we can have front side, back side. I've talked about the Asian session for me, very powerful, huge opportunities on the back side because markets will typically use the front side to set up. The calendar can affect that. We had major red news. Certain weeks have heavy major red news, and that can affect how the U.S. session will trade. And often the Asian session or the London session will give traders very, very good opportunities for parabolic trade setups. And remembering that I'm, you know, two to three of those a week can significantly compound your account. Now let's just review this rationale one more time. So on on any given day, we can be looking at a trend trade or a reversal trade opportunity in a pump and dump manner. So focusing on pump and dump for a moment, a parabolic trade setup. This could be a trend trade, a market that's been dumping down, made lower lows and pumps up maybe over two days or three sessions on the third day, on the day that we're trading. Maybe it's a Monday, uh, maybe it's a Tuesday, doesn't matter. Or we may be at the high or lo a lower area of a day. This could be low hanging fruit, but it's the setup. How does the market set up to give me this parabolic opportunity? And when it does, our basic model for trade entries will give me an easy, non-subjective, non-analysis paralysis method for entering into the trades. Now, traders have, I've, I've made it the basic model to keep it simple. There's no analysis paralysis. It's very straightforward. And so when we have that set up, the market allows us that entry without any 
indecision process. It's very straightforward. Let's walk through some instruments from this week and let's put our method to the test. You know, simple, reproducible, scalable trading opportunities. And I want to emphasize to traders a uh, quote from two quotes that I use repeatedly. The first one is, I just wait until there is money lying in the corner. And all I have to do is go over there and pick it up. I do nothing in the meantime. This is where traders often uh, get stuck as they're trying to trade every day. They want to take trades. And, and they're trading markets where they're trying to get a direction right. That's 50-50 trading, as I talked about, on the side of subject subjectiveness and inconsistent over time. Uh, and that's my opinion. These are all my opinions, and which is why I've filtered things down to taking only specific setups so that I know I have a 90-10 edge in taking. Now, if a trade comes on a Friday, most traders can't even wait. They can't wait. They, they couldn't wait till that Friday to take the best trade candidate because they want to trade on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And there may be, there may be opportunities on those days. But the parabolic, the larger scalable opportunity may not come till Friday or Thursday. And so that's my thinking, just sitting back, st stepping back, waiting. Anything in between, the smaller trade setups that are three session setups, maybe for a session scalp, fine, take those trades. But the larger scalable opportunities may build up over the week. And the second quote that I repeat to myself is, if most traders would learn to sit on their hands 50% of the time, they would make a lot more money. This is from Bill Lipschitz, the Sultan of Currency. Again, repeating the concept of stepping back and waiting for the larger setups to happen. When you realize that everything comes from the levels, and I, I say this often to traders, once you see it, you can't unsee it. My thought process, uh, it's designed to protect myself, to keep me out of the markets. I put this together myself through years of painful learning, making a lot of mistakes, doing many things wrong repeatedly, uh, just crazy stuff, and, and then repeating that again and again until finally, as I've said many times, you make money on the days that it's easy to make money. So why not only trade those types of setups? This is my weekly process to hunt out the best setups. This is not beat the market maker. This is not market profile. This is not three-day cycles. This, this information has been compiled and put together pieces of everything for, for myself. This has not been around for the beginning of time. It, this is what I have put together for myself. And when I emphasize this and, and provide this for other traders and people are out there taking information weekly and selling it and, and still not even understanding what a parabolic trade setup is, they're doing all kinds of other things. And the reason why I'm saying this is that if you're watching this video right now and you master the process, you can have unlimited opportunities for scalable parabolic trade setups. If you're trying to read price action, count levels, M's and W's, you'll get trades. You will certainly get trades. But will you ever understand how to scale those up? Will they ever be repeatable and easily reproduced? It's about managing myself Monday to Friday and hunting out two to three larger scalable opportunities. Not trying to trade markets every day so I can catch a move and make some money. Where can I make a lot of money? Where can I make a lot of money? Where can Stacy Burke make a lot of money? That's my objective. Not trying to read markets. Uh, so people talk about, oh, it's this information has been around. It's this. No, it's not. It's there's nothing even related to that. Not even close. Completely, completely different information. Now there's bits and pieces that will overlap because markets over there. there there's nothing new under the sun. But I've talked about behavior of the trader, the timings, the levels, behavior of price. The setups are very specific. Front side, back side. And understanding that, that one instrument may only give one parabolic best trade setup in a week. So when traders say, well, I only trade this, this market or I only trade that market or I only trade these three markets, um, that's fine. I, you know, again, I'm not judging. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. The reason why I follow the basket is because I don't care about the instrument. I'm looking for the setup. Where can I find the best parabolic setup? Now, sometimes an instrument may give two or three in a week. I mean, gold, obviously, with, with 
the amount of movement that it has been providing traders. There has been several parabolic opportunities. But just emphasizing to you traders that this is my rationale, my thought process. So if things get diluted down or information's being sold somewhere else saying that, oh, they learned from Stacy, and I, I don't understand, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there's no different interpretation of that. And an, an opportunity, a parabolic setup is what it is. It's you, you can't change that. It's it's either a pump and dump or a dump and pump parabolic opportunity, or there isn't one at all. So if we take a look at gold, this is a 30-minute chart. And just going over our basic template that we talked about, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, Monday's day one. Tuesday's day two. Wednesday is day three and our reset day, heading into the backside of our week. Thursday's day two and Friday, day three. Now, one of the questions that I got from several traders, uh, as I've mentioned, is uh, I've talked about train your eyes to move horizontally. And several traders have said, well, I don't understand what that means. What that means is this, move horizontally at the levels. So we have an opportunity where the market has gone out on Monday above the high of Friday outside of the previous day and weeks high on top of closing price and we moved horizontally into our u.s window underneath we have a high of day high of session shorting opportunity in our u.s window but we also had a market that gave traders a low of day low of session buying opportunity at closing price near the end of that window we head into our day two with higher highs and higher lows. Now we'll talk, we'll talk, we're just going to go through the process first. We'll talk about the trades themselves in a moment, but I want traders to understand. Also, I talk about classical charting, Peter Brandt. This forms a large rectangle on our day one, day two. Day two, as you heard me say, typically expands the range. Uh, Paul Tudor Jones, think of your entry price as last night's close. So again, the closing price is our reference point when the new week begins the auction process. We auction away, make a higher high. There's our range, our opening range now for the week. Day two expands the range. It goes higher and makes a higher high on day two. And again, moving your eyes horizontally from the levels, timings, levels, behavior of price. Tuesday, day two expands the range. Wednesday, our reset day. Our day three, we can have either a parabolic trend trade or a parabolic reversal trade. Now, the market has broken outside of our opening range on day two. It's closed out of balance. We have higher highs. Do we have a parabolic trade setup opportunity? We'll talk about that again in a moment. Train your eyes to move horizontally at the levels in the timing window. Day one, day two, day three, higher highs again. Now, closing price, interestingly enough, we have our uh, Wednesdays, our midpoint range of the week. Let's just put a little midpoint horizontal line at the midpoint of our Wednesday. And we have our closing price of Tuesday up top, heading to the backside of our week. We have a new day one, day two, day three train our eyes to move horizontally at the levels day one day two day three i've talked about free cash friday offering parabolic trend trade or a parabolic reversal trade thursdays are day two on the back side we'll just move our box higher highs again on thursday expanding the range still going up we had traders trying to short this market and as I mentioned on uh, Thursday, wait for the market to give us a signal. We had a first red day on Thursday. So coming back to signal days, Monday our opening range closed as a green day, but we have a market that's just day one, day two, day three, higher highs, higher lows. We have a first red day. And that gave traders a fantastic first red day shorting opportunity in the Asian session on Friday. Again, train your eyes to move horizontal at the levels. Day, day one, our Wednesday reset, our Wednesday reset comes down before closing higher. Day one, day two, first red day, shorting opportunity, 
Day three, higher highs. Thursday made a higher high into the close. Our first red day short reverses back inside of Thursday's low of day level and makes a higher high on the inside. Higher high on the inside. Train your move, your eyes to move horizontally at the levels. Non-farm payrolls dumps down into our peak formation low made in the Asian session. This is a 30 minute chart again. But even with our 30 minute chart, if we put our universal entry criteria for our basic entry model for trades, parabolic explosive continuation trade on free cash Friday after non-farm payrolls. Day one, day two, day three, reset. Day one, day two, day three, front side, back side. All we've done is move our eyes horizontally at the levels in the timing windows. Now again, a parabolic shorting opportunity in Asia. Other trade opportunities at the levels after major red news. I said this uh, earlier in the week, third hour trades, third hour trades on gold. We had three, at least three days of third hour trades on gold. A third hour being the 10 a.m. hour, New York session. Now, price is in a box. I learned a lot from Peter Brandt, classical charting. I've talked about Peter several times, but just, again, going back to basic classical charting principles. We have our opening range. Day two expands the range. We have a, a rectangle now targeting a range expansion. We have already done 100% expansion of that range and are potentially en route to finishing a second full expansion of that range. Free Cash Friday gives a parabolic range expansion trade opportunity in a market driven by other time frame traders for a scalable rinse and repeat opportunity. So just coming back to another point with trades. So traders, lots of traders are trading, just taking trades. And every trade has the same uh, risk, 1% risk and, and you know, getting, I'm going for 2% return or whatever. Uh, but I'm only looking for one or two scalable opportunities that offer me, you know, whatever, 50, 100, 200 pips. Uh, but, but they're driven by other time frame traders and they're scalable, meaning that I can put size on those trades and they're going to move. This is a 30 minute chart, maybe 30 to 45 minutes, maybe one hour, two hour, three hours. And as we see with a parabolic continuation trade, that market has closed at the extreme zero heat zero heat. So I could get in there and trade risk 1% and hold on to that. But I'd rather take one or two trades in the week that I can size into and maximize my return on that opportunity. We're looking at the NASDAQ uh, just as an example, again, an, an, an index. So we, I talk about having a basket of currencies, look for one best trade candidate on a currency, maybe one on gold, maybe one on an index. So three, looking just for three best trade parabolic opportunities. And again, you might get a couple on one instrument as we just saw on gold. There were other trades obviously, but I'm just looking at it, demonstrating the process and how opportunities can present when you're patient and you can sit on your hands. Now I only trade the indexes in the New York session. We have our simple process. We have Monday, our opening range. We have the low of the previous week. We have a market that on day two now, day two, is a range expansion, potentially day, the day that expands the range. Monday's day one, opening range. We have a first red day on our Monday, a day that makes higher highs first and closes below the open. And that is confirmed when we break Monday's low of day level prior to the U.S. session. Now, again, Basic model, this is a 30 minute chart, which means if we're on our smaller time frame opportunity, it's being driven by other time frame traders. And when the market is already in breakouts, we are targeting a full range expansion as a potential profit target, a full range expansion of the high and low of the day. Now, several traders ask this again and again and again. This is not Fibonacci, this is just the Fib tool. And I have just changed the numbers to 100. 200, 300%. Classical uh, charting principles, again from Peter Brandt, Schaubach, or Edwards and McGee, targeting a range expansion as a potential profit target in our 
New York session. So we come to our window right at our U.S. window. The market is already in parabolic expansion opportunity mode, day two. Day three is our reset day. We have an inside day. That's a signal day. When Thursday breaks the high of the inside day, we have higher highs. We can redraw our levels. Always redraw our levels whenever a market breaks one of the daily levels. This break of that daily level confirms Tuesday's low as the low of the week for a three-day setup. Now, this was later in the day outside of our 12 candle window, but in the closing range, closing session of the week uh, of the day, sorry, day one, day two, day three. Now this template is a specific template, meaning that this day three opportunity is a template that traders will use for parabolic shorting opportunities. Now I want to come back just to the process. Day one, day two, day three, reset. Day one, day two, day three, Friday, coming back, just we'll go back through our little process again, training your eyes to move horizontally at levels, a shorting opportunity in the London session, a shorting opportunity in the US window for the parabolic range expansion. Levels, markets going higher, we have a shorting opportunity at the high of the day on a three day setup. And on free cash Friday, a market that on non-farm payrolls pinned down for the parabolic reversal session trade opportunity back into lower level shorts from Thursday's parabolic blow off. Now you'll again, you'll notice the levels price moves from level to level. Several traders hit the indexes for the reversal parabolic reversal trades on free cash Friday. And at the bottom of our range, we have, as Peter Brandt would call it, a pattern within a pattern, a rectangle of trap volume down low on top of closing price. Paul Tudor Jones, think of your entry price as last night's closing price. If we can't get that because of the spike on major red news, again, this is a 30 minute chart. The market coils sideways, coils sideways at the levels inside of our universal EMA for a parabolic reversal trade on free cash Friday. Now we're looking at a currency pair, the Euro Australian. Uh, we could go through several, but in the interest of time, I, again, I'm demonstrating the process. Mastering the process is the key. Separating uh, myself away from chasing candles and understanding the larger parabolic trade setups, the opportunities that offer me scalable opportunities, and then being able to identify them over the course of the week and just hunting out two or three uh, there is no need to be chasing candles and chasing movement. It's a, I'm looking for the opportunity for the larger time frame parabolic opportunity. So again, coming back to our process, Monday, day one, opening range. Friday's closing price is where the auction process starts from. That's where everything starts from. They start to trade and establish the range. We make a lower low on Monday, our opening range, and a slightly higher high. You'll notice that the market closes pretty much where it opened on Friday. Friday's closing price, Thursday's closing price, Friday's closing price, Monday's closing price. Train your eyes to move horizontally at the levels. In London, the market makes a lower low, a lower low on the inside. Lower low on the inside is a setup potentially now for a pump and dump opportunity. Train your eyes to move horizontally at the levels. Monday's closing price projects across. We're inside of Monday's high of the week. Level, day one, day two, day three, a shorting opportunity from closing price in the US window after major red news that breaks down below closing price. That's a first red day template. First red day template. High of the week, shorting opportunity in the U.S. window, a three-session setup that closes as a first red day. Train your eyes to move horizontally at the levels. Euro-Australian is one of the pairs in my Asian session basket. We have now day one resetting. Our Wednesday resets becomes a day one. Peak formations are up on our day one and closes as a first red day. Thursday, day two, 
gives us a parabolic shorting opportunity in our Asian window. This is a 30-minute chart, so again, uh, reinforcing dri driven by other time frame traders. Larger time frames are driving this move now, and on our smaller time frame, we have uh, our, our entry criteria is already met by the longer time frame trader. Timings, levels, behavior of price. Now we are outside of the range in breakout a potential profit target, therefore, is a full range expansion of our high low of the previous day. Whenever the market goes into a breakout, that is my pro projected profit target potential on a range expansion opportunity on day two on the backside of our Euro Australian. Train your eyes to move horizontally at the levels. And I mentioned to traders that these are often the trades that DCB, they don't come back. Now, at the end of the day, the end of the session, they've pulled that back inside. And as I said to traders, we can see, as Paul Tudor Jones says, traders are trying to counter trend this and buy it down low. Eventually, it does reverse, but not until it does a full range expansion. And then the next day, Closing price, Asian session, the reversal opportunity back into breakout traders from closing price. So uh, traders often will try and get it on the day. In this particular case, the market did reverse, but also understanding that on free cash Friday, they may get a parabolic reversal opportunity on the backside from closing price which this market gave a beautiful parabolic reversal trade. So we have a large range expansion opportunity on the backside, shorting opportunities on day three, and a parabolic session reversal trade opportunity on free cash Friday. So in closing, uh, I want to repeat that my process is about identifying the best trading parabolic trading setups, not taking trades. Uh, simple, scalable, repeatable, multiple opportunities, no analysis paralysis, no guesswork. It keeps me out of the market so that I'm not trying to, you know, count subjective things and fault. how can you do that over 20 instruments? How can you possibly count pushes and levels and find M's and W's over 20 instruments or even five instruments in a, in a, in a session or a basket? So I'm looking for simple, simple, repeatable, the process. My process is simple and I made it simple because I want to find instruments that fit my process, to fit my templates, because that will help me identify the scalable setups. If I'm trying to find trades, that is where I can get myself into trouble. That is where I can uh, take, you know, I'll have some winners, I'll have some losers because it's random. But when I take the same trades over and over and over again, the same trade setups over and over and over again, there's a high probability that I'll have the same outcomes and I can scale those up in size. So I'm not interested in taking trades. I'm interested in trading setups, using levels and timings to manage myself to be able to grow and scale with a high probability and a high consistency rate that I can easily reproduce week in and week out. That is my objective. So hopefully traders got to some value from this today. Again, you can take that process and go back and back test that on any instrument in your week. Again, I have a, a simple model that I use. I follow pairs in the Asian session. I'll show that in closing again. So I'll follow the major pairs, but most likely the cross rate pairs in the Asian window will give me a parabolic opportunity. They have more volatility, but occasionally the yen Aussie dollar, they can give some very, very clean opportunities, day two, day three, whatever that may be. Again, London, Euro, pound, Swiss franc, any major pair can move gold in any one of the three sessions. But over the course of the week, any pair can move in London or Asia. In the U.S. window, I typically will have a bit more focus on the Canadian dollar cross rate pairs. Uh, for simple reason is that uh, U.S. dollar obviously will trade heavier in the U.S. window, as would the Canadian dollar. Canadian dollar, uh, Canadian central bank, whatever, they'll be potentially large players during that U.S. window. So the Canadian dollar may offer one great parabolic opportunity within the week. And again, major uh, indexes, the U.S., S&P, NASDAQ, DJ30, and of course, oil and gold in that New York session. So as I have repeated, if I can get one or two great trades in a currency pair over the course of the week, uh, gold, 
an index oil or uh, whatever, three or four parabolic opportunities that are scalable, those are the only trades I'm looking for in the week. And if I get two or three, it's still substantially opportunity for scaling into those trades, locking in the money, managing myself, and getting off the screen, keeping it simple, reproducible, and scalable. 1% better every single day, traders. Targeting 90-10 trade setups that make you money. Not taking trades and hoping to make money. Taking trade setups that make me money. Have a great day. And may the markets go with you.